Hello everyone, it is me, Guillotine. I've got for you today a highlight reel of everything that took place today. If you didn't know, um, two tournaments kicked off today that are official tournaments of AC's Battle Runes. I'll be competing in what's going to be called the Conqueror League. I was fortunate enough to get a first round buy, so you won't really be seeing any action from me today, but here are just a few of the highlights from the round of 64. Um, tomorrow starts round of 32, you'll see me in there. I'm going to try to pronounce all of these Korean names properly, so hopefully I don't screw it up too bad. But with all of that being said, let's get into it. In match number one, we've got Bailey012 facing off against Chonga. All of these matches today take place on Sage's Valley. It's considered to be one of the favorites for competitive play, and I definitely have to agree. Um, Bailey's sending out a scout early, and it looks like Chonga is going to scout with some dogs and the dogs missed the first scout but the second one picks it up and it looks like he's going to be able to get a little bit of a scout but not too much bailey definitely sees the barracks there and we'll see how they respond second barracks going up and a tower as well but in come the dogs trying to get a hound rush the tower finishes in time and he does have one tide commander those tide commanders can be really frustrating when they start to stack up uh, chonga going ahead start his second base hits chrono Bailey checking to see if any cheese is happening up above, and he's going to start moving across the map with those Tide Commanders, taking down one dog, three more to go. Those Tide Commanders, as you can see, they just keep the front line pushed back if you can get enough of them. They can be really hard to kill. Bailey here pushing up into Chonga's base, but the towers go up just in time, and a bunch of Sneak Bombers and Dogs and Vodoons are coming out. The lightning hits just in time though and Bailey's able to win that fight. Back home he's got a necromancer out, Chongo with a little bit of a bat harass and across comes a dropship that is full of some more spearmen. Spearmen aren't exactly cheap so this is a pretty good investment. We'll see if Bailey gets the value that he's looking for. Dropping those four spearmen into the natural expansion of Chonga. And now these two great players are just kind of bouncing back and forth, trying to see who can get the best position. Bailey, being just a little bit more patient, is able to get another worker kill, and he's going to suck up his spearmen and take off. But back home, Bailey's got a problem of his own. There's two dropships full of Vikings and Bodoons and Hounds, and they're going to take out that tower, probably be able to take down the castle up in Bailey's natural expansion. And then Bailey is attacking Chonga's main. So this could turn into a bit of a base trade here. We'll have to see who can hold up. It looks like Bailey's towers are going to be able to save his main. But I think the damage might already be done back over in Chonga's base. And it looks like I'm right. So GG, Bailey advances to the round of 32. Up next, we've got Mystic Eyes and Novice. Both are incredible players. This map's got a ton of resources, but it is deceptively small, so we'll see if that plays out at all today. Um, both players going for a gas first. Pretty conventional opening so far. Mystic Eyes sending out a worker to scout just to kind of get an eye to see what Novice is doing, and it looks like Novice is now sending out a worker of his own. Mystic Eyes scouts two gas, two barracks. We'll see how he responds, but it looks like Novice here was faking him out, playing some mind games, uh, canceling that barracks to get started on an early expansion. We'll see if Mystic Eyes picks up on it. It looks like he's not. He's going to go for three barracks, kind of an all in. Mystic Eyes is one of the best at microwaving these ninjas, but Novice, knowing Mystic Eyes very well, is ready for it. He's got those iron pants, which do splash damage. They're one of the best units for handling ninjas, but Mystic is just going to kind of sit outside of the base, keep sending in those shadows to continue to annoy him. We've got a drop ship here full of sneak bombers, but it looks like a miss. Only shadows went down, so it's actually a pretty good exchange for Mystic Eyes here. We'll see if he can push up into the base and notice that Novice actually went for an expansion. I don't think he actually sees it at all. So not only does Novice hold here, but his economy is about to boom over Mystic Eyes because he had his expansion up much sooner. Novice now marching across the map with a small army of spearmen, iron pants, archers, and a few harpies. He's going to smartly just leave his units right outside of his base, split them up into a few small groups, try to control the map a little bit. A harpy does get sucked up by the electric towers, which really sucks. It's a lot of gas wasted. Mystic Eyes sending out some Ninja Shadows and a Dropship. This time it does connect and the Poison hits, taking out just about everything other than the Harpies. Mystic trying to push out with the Ninjas, but there's nothing they can really do in this situation. They get sucked up into the Whirlwind and Poison. Those Towers are holding strong, keeping Novice's army at bay. 
Mystic Eye's playing really good defense here, but he's got to find a way to get a third because Novice is on to his fourth, and eventually Mystic is just going to suffocate. However, Mystic does activate the ever so controversial Ambush Rune, so the snipers are cloaked at the moment, and if Novice can't get an Owl in, this, this rune has turned the tides of many a battle. That poison hitting, doing a little bit of damage, but Mystic Eye is smartly casting Whirlwind on where the bullets are coming from. All the snipers are going to go down. All that's left keeping Mystic Eyes in this is that one tower. It's going to pick off one Harpy. Mystic sending some troops across the map just to try to buy himself a little bit of time to rebuild, maybe for one more push. But Novice not having any of it, he decides he's going to go ahead, push up the ramp into Mystic's main. Whirlwinds and poison spells going off everywhere. At this point, the only thing keeping Mystic alive is this one tower, and it's going to go down. Novice advances to the round of 32. Good game, guys. Off to the next match, we've got the other Bailey, Bailey Dodo, facing off against Nunsaram. Both players are pretty much going for the exact same open. Worker, gas, barracks. They're going to be sending out workers to scout at exactly the same time. We'll get to see them high five here as the grass meets the snow. They're both going to gather some information and respond. It'll be pretty interesting since they're both kind of reading and reacting right here. Nunsalam gets up into Bailey Dodo, sees the barracks. Bailey here is going to go for, looks like a little bit of a tower rush. We've got the catapult going down, kind of a weird spot to put it. I don't know exactly what the aim is here. nunsalam has got an owl out, but he does not see it. He knows it's there now, though, because it's hitting his ranger. And Bailey Dodo's putting a barracks behind it, so we'll see what he's going for here. He's going for two barracks, okay, and he's building some goblin scientist and some balloonist, okay. I like the use of the balloonist right here, but Nunsaram knows that the proxy is there, and usually when these proxies get blown up early, it goes downhill for the person that put them down. A nice fireball connect there, but it does look like Nunsalam is going to be able to crawl out of his base. He's got some snipers, a necromancer out, tide commanders. Um, I do actually like the, the balloonist against this deck composition. However, the fact that the proxy is getting blown up, I don't know if Bailey is going to be able to get enough of them. You need a lot to be able to overcome this. Bailey invested a lot in this rush, so I would expect Nunsalam to go on the offensive, and you can see Bailey getting ready for it, putting down two catapults, pumping out some balloonists. Four minutes in, both players still on one base. It looks like Nunsalam just put down his expansion. And now he's going to go on the offensive. He's going to try to control the map a little bit, being smart, not trying to push up the ramp. Having all ground units, those catapults will just melt them. And then Bailey Dodo with a very nice poison and fireball connect. Partnered that with some very impressive balloonist micro, and Bailey might be turning the tides a little bit. They'll have to trade hyper efficiently. In fights like this, it can be really easy for your balloons to just get sucked up and get shot down really quick. But if he keeps volleying like this and bouncing back and forth and killing a unit or two every time, he now has those druids out which are going to help with healing, the balloons will repair themselves being next to the buildings. Quite a few of them go down, but all that Nunsalam has left isn't going to be enough to end the game outright. So Bailey Dodo is staying alive here, holding them off, able to get his natural expansion up and rolling. And I'd say, considering how the game started in another fireball connect, considering how the game started, things have kind of evened out and we're back to just starting this game over. Nunsanam definitely has a little bit of an economic advantage going for base number three already, but if Bailey keeps trading like this, I don't know, anything can happen. Nunsanam already has another wrecking crew outside of Bailey's base, and it's only a matter of time before those towers time out and he'll actually get to push in. The snipers are going to try to take it down now. They do get it, um, and he it looks like Nunsanam's going to try to push another amazing fireball connect and poison connect gonna try to push out now getting some good hits in with the balloons the druids underneath healing the balloons still being able to heal themselves being next to those barracks and they just keep popping out another fireball hit and just like that Bailey's pulled another rabbit out of his hat forced another stalemate we'll see if he's able to hunt down this necro and no the necro is gonna live to fight another day Bailey checking 12 o'clock see if anything's there and it looks like gonna go ahead and smartly defend while he sets up base number three so I'm also pushing up for 12 o'clock and we're going to have ourselves an engagement, another big fireball connect, the lizard connecting, those balloons are not by any structures so they're not going to be able to heal themselves so we'll see if they're able to last. Nunsalam doesn't have this base defended at all. 
Bailey scientists breaking up the cluster of troops. Another fireball connect, another poison connect, taking down all those snipers. Nunsalam going to go ahead and pull back all of his troops into his natural to try and defend. Bailey just hovering outside of his base. I think, yes, going to go up here and try to take out base number three. Bailey's been able to stockpile a decent amount of gas, and he's going to be able to just keep these wounds coming, and they're really giving Nunsalam a problem. But it ain't over yet. Nunsalam pushing out with some rangers and snipers and another necro. Bailey noticing it, pulling back, using the cliff to his advantage, getting some repair from that catapult. And once again, those balloons proving strong. Too much for Nunsalam to handle. Having to surrender that 12 o'clock position to Bailey, uh, Nunsalam's only hope is to take 5 o'clock. That's the only way to keep the resources even. If someone controls 12 o'clock, you have to have 5 and 7. So he's sending workers down now. He does get a castle up at 5 o'clock, but Bailey is going to go ahead and start attacking up at the top. The castle goes down, and that might be it. A very nice blizzard connect from Noontanam, but I don't think it's going to be enough. He just can't get close enough to those balloons, and there it is. GG, what a game. Uh, Bailey Dodo advancing to the round of 32. Up next, we have Devil, or Devil facing off against Robin TC. Early on, it looks like Devil's going to be workering up. Robin's got a gas down and also appears to be workering up. No scout sent out yet. Robin's going for a double gas, so we'll have to see what that's for. Um, and then there goes the scout right now. In my last video, I talked about how I rarely will go double gas, so I'm interested to see how this works out. Devil's going to send some hounds out to scout. He's going to be able to take out this worker, yes, before Robin's able to even get any information. So Robin now with a single tower, two barrack, two gas, goblin scientist. Everyone's using goblin scientist today. I don't blame them. The new buff makes them really fun to use, really annoying to fight against. We'll see if Devil has any tricks up his sleeves to deal with it because those Vikings and the Hounds won't get the trick done versus these scientists. Um, the Wolf Riders will help, but some balloons are coming out, which is pretty interesting. Um, balloons are going to... He's going to attack from two angles, and I can see now that the double gas from Robin was because he wanted to try to quickly get ambushed so he can have cloaked snipers, but I think the pressure's hitting at just the right time. Both players going for kind of a one base all-in if Robin holds here, I think he wins. In scenarios like this, the pressure is really on the aggressor, and Devil's going to have to pull back. Robin's going to go on the offensive here. I don't know if this is really smart. He should be playing defense, try to get that ambush out, and then poison and lightning all but decimating the army of Robin. He's going to pull back. He's got a few snipers left, so he does still have range on the balloons, but I think the balloons might just start to run away with it here. This whole build relies on getting Ambush out, and I just don't think it's going to happen. So Devil's going to be advancing to the round of 32. Good game, guys. Up next, we have Rushing versus my friend Foxy. Rushing, sending out a scout, putting down a gas early. Foxy putting down a barracks first. Maybe we'll get a little bit of a rush happening, sending out some hounds to scout. Looks like Foxy is rolling with a little bit of a different deck today. We usually have the exact same deck, and that's because I stole it. Rushing having the appropriate response here and pumping out some rangers when he sees the hounds coming. Rangers really chew through dogs pretty easily. Um, Foxy is going to send these pups up to see if uh, expansion's coming, and it is not. Rushing, sending out an owl. Looks like he'll soon discover that Foxy already has base number two up. Um, and then as the name would suggest, rushing is going to be doing a little bit of rushing with a drop ship. It looked like some rangers and a spear. Oh, and a scientist. Um, both players have scientists. But rushing here, being able to keep Fox's units down below, is going to be able to take out all of these workers. Lightning poison, and I don't know if Foxy has any units left. Some more scientists are popping out, but Rushing already has a Harpy across the map, and another dropship coming in. This is pretty uncharacteristic for Foxy, we'll see how it shakes out. Some towers going up on the platform above, and Rushing is going to pull away, so Foxy gets the hold, but not after some significant damage was done. And back home, what makes this really impressive for Rushing is Rushing has already got his mineral line saturated for his expansion. 
if you're going to apply a pressure early on, this is how you do it. Um, you have to macro behind it, and rushing just doing a hell of a job. Foxy being able, though, to build back up. Foxy does have Chrono, so catching up is not out of the question, but another Lightning Poison as well as Whirlwind. Talk about an unfortunate time to try moving out down the ramp. Um, Foxy has a ton of barracks right now, perhaps a little bit of a overcommit to the pressure that Rushing's putting on because with these Harpies, Rushing's going to be able to just clean out everything that's in the main. Um, you really needed that money to be able to fight this off. Uh, Rushing's going to be able to take down this castle if he wants to. Um, some more snipers and hounds coming out for Foxy. Some more scientists and spears marching across the map for Rushing. Rushing elects to go up top trying to take out the towers the towers might be able to hold this off and it looks like it does but rushing pulling away still just creating chaos everywhere attacking every building it seems that foxy has up i don't know if rushing is aware of this third up here but smartly just killing all the barracks not getting overzealous and marching into the towers and giving foxy a chance just taking out the barracks where foxy can't make more troops forcing Foxy to keep repairing these buildings, which is just sucking up more and more gold. This is a really impressive outing for rushing. Um, I can't wait to see what they're going to do in the next round because I don't see Foxy coming back from this unless there's a miracle that's about to happen. I think the only thing keeping Foxy in this is sheer stubbornness, and you know what? I'd be the same way. GG. Impressive rushing. I'll see you next round. Now on to Kongolgidnida versus Nubi. It looks like Kongolgidnida is going to go for a barracks first and send out a scout. Newbie gas first and also sending out a scout. Scouts will high five in the middle and see what they can see. Kongolgidnida is sending out some Noel. We're going to do some Noel pressure. That Noel does kill Newbie scout. Newbie sees the barracks, but that's it. He does know that the Knolls are coming and Vikings are the appropriate response. And Knoll's not going to be able to do much of anything versus the Viking. It looks like both players are working towards a double gas, double barracks. Congo Gibnida has an archer that's coming out. Not a bad addition to the gnolls. And oh, a proxy barracks. I completely missed this. And some mini dragons are being put out onto the map. Uh, I've never really seen them put over there. This could get interesting. Mini dragons can really, really... Um, kill workers very quickly, but the electric tower is the right answer for it and cleans both of them up. Another mini dragon coming up to the natural, also going to get taken care of. Gankul Gibnida pushing up the ramp, but these Vikings proving too much to handle. I really just think Nubi has the hard counter to this deck. There's really no better card right now than Viking when it comes to holding down the front line. They're actually getting a nerf pretty soon. I'll talk about it in a patch notes video that I'm going to do in a few days. Um, and yeah, I think it'll shake up the game. We'll see. Some folks are upset about it. I like Vikings, but honestly, like defending a Viking one base all in is really difficult these days. Um, even if you've got flying units, it's just like they don't die and they end up just killing everything. Um, anyways, uh, Newbie notices the proxy. Gankul Gibnida going for base number three. Newbie is already up. And Newbie is also making a play for the 12 o'clock location. Um, Gankul Gibnida, some nice spacing with his units here, really protecting them from an owl that's going to just drop a spell down or something goofy like that. Um, and it looks, yeah, like we're going to have an engagement here close to Gankul Gibnida's uh, natural or his main rather, and whirlwind hits, poison hits, Vikings are doing all that stunning, and wow, Gankul Gibnida's army just kind of melts away with hardly no money left in the bank. I think this one is going to be over. Tough break with the unit selection there, but good game. Uh, Gankul Gibnida, good game, newbie, round of 32. On to the second to last match of this video, we have Yang Yang in the blue and Bancure will be in the red. I don't think I've ever seen Yang Yang play, I don't think we played each other, I don't think I've seen any film, but I've definitely seen my fair share of film on Bancure and Bancure has beaten me several times over. Both players going for fairly similar opens, sending out that worker to scout. 
Boncure looks like he was a little bit quicker. He's able to scout a uh, double gas and a quick expand and a tide commander. So that's a lot of money invested early. Boncure might choose to just kind of all in and see if he can outright win it. The goblin scientists are coming out. The snipers are coming out. Owls. Both players have owls out. And it looks like a harpy from Yang Yang. Boncure has walked a worker down here. So we'll see if he's choosing to put a barracks close or maybe a support tower close to the fight. Um, Yang Yang doing a good job though, keeping those snipers out of the base. But Bankyor has this owl placed perfectly. He's got vision on the high ground. He's able to snipe down a few of these tide commanders. They're all grouped up. Bankyor hits lightning. A fireball is coming down and it's kind of a miss. Bankyor I think is going to run away with this one. All of Yang Yang's units are dead. And he's just racing to get this tower up, but the Vikings are moving in. It's not going to be enough. Young Young calls good game. Boncure will be advancing to the round of 32. And lastly, probably one of the most anticipated matchups in the first round of the bracket. Two players that basically live at the top of the rankings rent-free. No need for introductions, but here we are. We have number one mechanic in the blue and Acacia over in the red. Both going for worker gas barracks. Acacia has sent out a scout. Mechanic has not sent out a scout yet. Um, so we'll see what uh, what he's got cooking there. Acacia gets in and gets out before he sees Mechanic's third building. So Acacia does not see that Mechanic's opted to go for a second gas. Um, Mechanic's sending out an owl to scope out Acacia. Sees that Acacia went for a quick expand. So again, we might be in for another quick one. Acacia has already walked a worker down to where he plans to put castle number three. Uh, meanwhile, back at home, number one mechanic has gotten his second base up and going. But Casey puts the castle down. Mechanic's able to get in and kill that worker, which is huge, um, delaying base number three. Um, Acacia leaving this castle up though, I maybe would have canceled it so that I could get some gold to start pumping out units, but it looks like he's going to try to allow it to survive. Meanwhile, down below, these snipers are just getting hammered with a blizzard poison combination and huge mistake by Acacia leaving that castle up. Mechanic's able to kill it. That is a negative 400 gold for Acacia. Um, also another barracks going down that's another 150 mechanic is just walking on in all over Acacia making good use of the smoke positioning those snipers well but it's not going to be enough mechanic gets the win moving on to the round of 32 good game guys and that's going to do it for today not everyone chose to show their replay which is understanding we're in the middle of a tournament However, tune back in tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll have some more highlights for you of the round of 32. But as for now, that's going to be it. So I will holler at you all next time. Later.